Kyra, Jester, The Exorcist, Friar Tuck, Breeza, Malice, Candorous, Viconia, Caduceus. Let's talk about clerics. I've played a handful of clerics in my day, so much so that the icon of my mask is actually based off the design of one of my favorite clerics. And while clerics are classically healers, they are also uniquely suited to fill a variety of roles within a party. From ranged damage to support, healers all the way up to frontline tanks and DPS. While other classes like druids can fulfill some of these roles and in their own unique ways, clerics have some of the most flexibility to move around the field in combat, but also dominate in and out of combat RP as well. So before anybody in the comments starts off with clerics are just weak paladins or saying something that might make them look foolish in front of their rule lawyer friends like, druids are much better healers, or how can you say you're good at ranged damage, you can't even cast a fireball? I see you. I know what you're doing. And don't even get me started on what you can do with those good berries of yours. I'm talking about pulling food from nothing, not like finding berries and making your own weird vacation corp. I'm talking about that real magic, the kind you get from believing in it and stuff. Let's go ahead and start by talking about what makes clerics clerics. And of course, we're talking about alignments. I'm just as surprised as you are. You may think, oh man, holy man, that's no fun. That's not gonna be what's gotta be a good character. Nope. Not true. The only real stipulation is that, especially with older editions and Pathfinder, you have to stay relatively close to the alignment of your chosen deity. But in the grand scheme of things, you don't even really need a deity anymore. I wanted to start with alignment because either you came to clerics because you thought, oh boy, radiant damage, or check out the massive heals on this one, or necromancy. And if you're here for necromancy, you're in the right spot. Just keep in mind that all of these things are correct. You can very easily do all of those things. It just depends on your domains. Domains, however, are attached to your alignment. They still have that varying capabilities of saying you have to be within one step or two steps, depending. So me starting by saying what alignment do you want to be is really picking, helping you decide on your domains and narrowing down which DD you're going to pick. Instead of going the other way around, I think this is a more simple way to do it. It might feel like we're bouncing all over the place with alignments, deities, and domains, but they really all boil down to the same thing for clerics. You can't pick one without the other, and unless you really want to play a fallen cleric who just abandons their deity, your devotion to that area is really what defines your class. Uh, the other thing we have to talk about before we get into that is spellcasting. Spellcasting is a bit weird for clerics, whereas most other spellcasters have a limited number of spells known. That is to say that they are limited or there are limits to their power or spells that they keep in their edgy wizard diaries. Uh, clerics have no such limitations. If you need something different that you didn't prepare that day, you can kind of just ask your sugar daddy or mama to help you out and uh, yeah, they'll happily be like, yeah, that's cool, let's swap those spells out. You have access to every spell that is castable to you each day when preparing your spell. That's super powerful. That's amazing. It's also very complicated for people learning play clerics, sitting down and going, I have all the spells. Paladins also have this divine favoritism, but with a much more limited spell list. And let's be honest, you're not here to play paladin anyhow. You're here to play cleric. Cleric is much better. You can prepare any number of spells equal to your wisdom modifier plus your love. That's three plus cantrips, three domain spells, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So before you even pick up your doom hammer or your shield, you're already a spell flinging party buff healing monster. That's awesome. You need to cast cure wounds five times in one day. Yeah, go for it. Decide that maybe the last time you cast it, you're going to cast inflict wounds and get rid of that pesky rogue with, without anyone being the wiser. Oh no, I couldn't save him. What a shame. As long as you have both of those spells prepared at the beginning of your day, you're good. Well, you're technically evil, but you know, I'm, I'm not your DM. I can't judge why you murdered that guy. That's, that's really on you. Let's talk about domains. Wait, no, let's talk about gods first. Ah, they're both the same. Clerics really are one of the only remnants of the priest, the devout, the holy worshiper, the, the many deities in the forgotten realms and beyond. And at the end of the day, I think that's still a very apt way to think about them. They are the devout, the clergy of religions, the followers, the worshipers, the not only gods and demons, but the way of life and lineages from untold millennia. And that's really what defines them. Clerics can come from any walk of life, any race, any creed, and can be followers of deities, ascended mortals, extra planar monstrosities, dragons, giant fish, the list goes on. Their flexibility comes from the cleric class not being forced around one way of doing things, but gain their power from the devotion to a single entity or cause. You may ask yourself, how is that different than a paladin or a warlock? And well, it's not but not for the reasons you might think. So let's say anyone who worships devotes themselves to a church or a cause as a cleric. Maybe a shifty cleric, maybe they're a really bad cleric, or maybe they're just there because they want free donuts on Sunday. The paladin, on the other hand, has taken it upon themselves to become the outreaching arm of that cause, champions to their order. And while that might be the case for a warlock, they are a bit more, shall we say, obligated to participate in whatever the deity is doing. So from the sliding scale, are all warlocks clerics? No, but a warlock could be a cleric. 
are all clerics paladins? No, but clerics could become one. In my mind, I think it's all about the intent. Clerics have a belief of devotion to something greater than themselves, except in the cases where they are worshiping themselves, but that's, that's a bootstrap paradox. Moving forward, let's just look at it like this. Clerics equal devotion. Paladins equal conviction, and warlocks have obligation. Otherwise, they're all kind of the same. Don't get stuck thinking that just because you have to have a deity to worship, you're fully bound to the lawfulness of their orders. Look at Theros of Myrrh from the Game of Thrones. He was classically one of the worst clerics around, but the Red God loved him and gave him power. That sort of sounds like a warlock, but his devotion to doing what he felt was right in respect for the Red God granted him those powers because the deity chose to have faith in him that he would do the right thing. Blessings and faith are what define the cleric, not their power and healing ability. If you really want to play a lawful stupid character, I won't stop you, but, but there should definitely be a little bit of wiggle room for what your chosen alignment is before you get smacked off your holy high horse by an angry deity. Most religions, real or otherwise, teach tolerance and duty, but the way your cleric worships with their chosen deity is really between them and the god they serve, or the lack thereof. And seriously, if you want to do that, talk to your DM. It's hella easy. You basically say, hey, I want to play an OP as fuck character with, uh, and have no consequences. And your DM's like, uh, no. And you're like, well, I bought pizza. And they're like, yeah, all right. You as a player are now a warlock, controlling an OP AF cleric who is definitely not a warlock, but maybe a little bit. You know, pack of the DM. So when I say let's talk about deities, what I'm asking you is, what does your cleric believe in? And while that doesn't have to be a specific deity, it can be. Clerics can believe in anything. They can believe in magic. Maybe it is the storm god. Maybe they believe in healing the sick, protecting the weak by dropping a righteous hammer of pain on them. And that's what domains are, baby! You can either start by choosing what your cleric wants to devote themselves to, and choose a domain that matches that, or you can choose a domain you like, i.e. necromancy, healing, holy fire, and see which deities match that domain. You can build it one way or the other, it doesn't really matter. And this can be a really fun way to find new deities to follow and build, so you can have a unique cleric. Uh, the domain itself not only defines finds the type of special spells that you specialize in, but also augments your channel divinity. This is basically your unique customization and specialization when building a cleric. These options can be as simple as full access to healing spells all the time, canceling critical damage, heavy armor use, or weapon specializations. So at the end of the day, you can still be a little bit of pretty much everything you want without losing the flavor of being this devout cleric. And at this point, if you want to go ahead or need something a little bit different and just really want to fuck with the DM, Divine Intervention, seriously, once a week. Just ask your deity, patron, self-fulfilling prophecies, or just straight up ask your DM, hey, can you help me out a little bit? You roll the divine dice, which is just you know, percentile dice, and see if you get lucky enough to break the game. Seriously, who else gets that kind of power ending fuckery at such a low level? It, it could be as complex as a wish spell or just being like, hey, can we turn the evil guy into a frog? And at that point, it's up to your DM about what they do. But the prayers of the clerics can have world altering consequences. And I think that kind of interaction with the DM specifically is very unique to clerics. And I very much love that without having to have like a high level wizard casting the wish spell all the time. At the same time, your divine intervention can be used for something very simple, like just asking the DM a question. Like, would we know that? Or can I pray for this? Let me let me try that. And I think that's a really nice way to be able to incorporate some flavorful RP directly with the DM. And that, once again, is something that's very unique. And I love that. It can be really complicated for your DM. And so at the same time, it's been some of the most fun, game-changing story twists and deus ex moments that I've ever had. The only other thing we need to talk about when building your character is what weapons they want to use. And this is where a lot of people will mistakenly say that paladins are martial clerics, which isn't totally wrong, because clerics can be martial priests. Clerics can come from fighters and scholars or monks, uh, but they generally start with simple weapons because they don't have that militaristic back. And I really think the focus needs to be on their path of devotion. If that is meant for them to pick up a sword and shield, then that's great, but it doesn't have to be. Something older editions did, as well as Pathfinder has done, is giving them proficiency with weapons based on their deity, the deity's chosen weapon. And I think that's really flavorful and adds to the game. That way you don't have to bend to a specific domain for martial weapons or armor, but you can make an argument that using the weapon or skill set would be part of your worship or devotion. Fuck, we really are just toying with being a warlock, aren't we? Definitely not a warlock. Okay, maybe a little bit. Did I mention necromancy yet? Because clerics used to be all about necromancy. Healing, necromancy. Skeletons, necromancy. Turning the undead, it's all necromancy. Uh, whether you want to raise the dead or bring life back to your friends or raise your enemies to fight alongside you in combat, clerics have a firm command of the living and a master over death. Regardless of your intentions or devotion, necromancy is kind of where you excel. I mean, grab a mace, grab your grandfather's skull, and let's just get the hell out of here. 
Thanks again for watching. If you have any cool cleric stories, or you've played a cleric, or you're thinking about making a cleric, I'd love to hear how you did that or are going to do that down in the comments below. As always, we are on the Discord if you want to jump over there and share your cleric story or art with us. We would love to see it. We've moved the live stream over to twitch.tv slash rogue zero. You know, usually there every weekday, building assets for the Patreon game or just doing artwork and commissions. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there's also a link for that down below, as well as the Twitch link. Thank you again for all your support. A large thank you to all of the Patreon members for helping us keep this channel going. We have a bunch more videos coming out in the future, as well as the Patreon game will be being released on YouTube. There are no video files for that for the first few episodes, but then we eventually do get, uh, get the video capture working. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and keep your dice on the table. Shoot, we didn't have time to talk about the War Priest, which is basically a martial cleric which once again could be a paladin or a warlock i really don't know why we split it up maybe we should just make it like a war cleric good in lock that sounds like a drain cleaner